I mean, uh, it's no secret that, uh, especially in the restaurant world, costs have been rising, so it has become an issue and uh, automation is just part of the future. And the way I look at it is uh, just do the right amount of automation so that the human then actually can focus more on the guest experience. Hi, I'm Shishir from Robot Lab. Uh, today we are here at the Ameswell Hotel uh, in the Bay Area, and we're here with uh, Simone and Dennis from the hotel. Thank you for taking the time for us. I mean, this is amazing, you know, having a chance to just come back here. I just cherish that. <laughs> Every single time I walk into the property, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful property. Um, so what made you decide to bring robotics um, into the hotels restaurant operations uh, maybe simone if you want to answer that yeah so i mean we are in the heart of the silicon valley and what better way to bring it to life in a hotel operation than really lean into it and and bring it to life here so that's really it was clear we always one of our brand pillars of the ameswell hotel is innovation we're right across as well from nasa ames that's where our name comes from so all about um, innovation and yeah we wanted to definitely experiment and see how technology can assist us and make our life a little bit easier um, and yeah see how it can help us and bring us forward that's that's awesome uh, I'm glad we were able to partner with you on that um, and then um, Dennis how did the your food and beverage team um, adapt to working with the T T10 and was it like a really steep learning curve or what was the experience like it wasn't a steep learning curve, but there was some initial confusion in the beginning, for sure. So it took a while for the team to get acclimated that all of a sudden you have a robot uh, being part of the team. But I think what um, switched it around was when they understood the capabilities of the robot and uh, they understood the capabilities of the robot, how he can support them mm -hmm. in their serving uh, efforts. And I think that's what turned it around. So just ex explaining to them or like them actually understanding like, oh, this is exactly how this is more useful. Is there an example of something like that? For example, if, uh, if I have a food runner who runs food to the table, but now all of a sudden he also has like, let's say a to-go order to take care of. What he would do before is he runs the food first, goes back uh -huh. and then runs the to-go order. So what he can do now is he runs the food to the table and the robot takes the to-go order. So it works simultaneously. So it's almost like uh, an assistant to the assistant. So, and once they understood that, that's when they started utilizing him. It's not just, hey, let's put uh, the tray number one for the food and tray number two for the delivery order, but have a parallel operation now. Correct. Where you're getting a better service for your customer. I think that dives into, like I had a question about this, um, it di dives directly into the question about like efficiency gains or other things that you've yeah. noticed. So absolutely, for example, our bartenders. Uh, so the bar is a little bit separate from the kitchen, right? So what we had to do beforehand was the bartender had to go to the kitchen, get their food. Now that's not the case anymore. So while the servers are focusing on the, on the uh, dining room as a whole, the robot can now be programmed, just take the food to the bar. So they don't even have to leave the bar anymore. So it actually, it does contribute quite a bit to the operational side. That, that's amazing to hear. Fun question. Does your robot have a name? It does have a name. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so the name of the robot, we did an internal contest uh, and the name that we voted for was Optimus Dine. Optimus Dine, exactly. oh, amazing. That is good. That is great. Who came up with that name? I did. Oh, wow. I'm glad you asked. Yes. <laughs> you won. You won the the, the contest. Now, of course, everybody thinks I rigged the game, but yeah, I I did win fair and square. No, this is a great name, actually. This is this is amazing. That's perfect. Um, and then, um, what was the first like wow moment where you realized uh, that this robot is actually making a difference in the in your operations? Um, so I think uh, it's twofold. It does actually help operationally. It's almost like it's a little assistant for the assistant or for the server. But it also uh, overall it just uh, adds to the atmosphere. So it's almost like uh, it's an eye catcher when he comes into the restaurant, plays his little music, and then people are looking around and seeing the robot and actually reacting to it. So uh, yeah, it takes kind of like the, 
the whole vibe, the atmosphere to another level, and people are really curious about it. it that, that is awesome. Is uh, have you seen like people react differently to it, like kids versus the adults, and how has other reaction yeah. to it? I mean, kids obviously love the robot. Um, yeah, but. Um, the first time I noticed when it's like, okay, he is part of the team is when guests would start taking selfies with the robot. Oh, so okay. that's where I was like, okay, we have something here. Uh, and the, yeah, you know, tagging you in the social media and doing all those things. Uh, yeah, so people are uploading it and yeah, yeah, for sure. And even um, sometimes they have a birthday party or something and then it's several people who are taking a picture with the robot, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, one more question around specifically the robot's operation, like are there, activity or tasks where you feel the robot is doing a better job or is more more better at those um, activities? I mean, the thing is, we are um, we're having a, a lot of large groups, right? So uh, what happens now is that, uh, again, the, the, while the server can focus on that table and the runner brings out the food, uh, the robot is now right behind them and then uh, adds more to the uh, to the dining experience because he can actually help with the deliveries and cut down the delivery time. That's amazing. And, and probably the customers may have uh, noticed that the food's like coming quicker or like it's more warm, like as soon as it's plated, yeah. it's ready. I think so, uh, because now when the customer sits at the table, so it's not just one food runner coming to you, it's now the food runner comes to you and then there's the robot behind it. Yeah, so it does help. That is perfect. Um, Simone, maybe a question for you. Have you noticed any measurable um, efficiency gains or like any other uh, benefits of using the robot at the hotel? And as is the innovation for you, like what parts do you feel like you've actually been able to innovate? So for us, we introduced the robot not to really take away someone's job or, you know, uh, cut hours, etc. It was really to enhance the service, to make it just a notch better, faster. Um, and that's really what it has done. Um, it's also a marketing tool for us, no doubt, right? Again, we are in the Silicon Valley and people come in. I had actually uh, my own kind of wow moment on Valentine's Day. We were very, very busy, sold out. And there was this couple that was coming in and the robot, uh, we had it programmed with little hearts right in front. Um, and uh, they were so fascinated. So the, um, uh, the female guest, she was like, oh my God, they have a robot. And uh, he just responded, ah, it's so Silicon Valley. <laughs> it was just really fun. Um, and again, when the robot comes, just seeing the smiles on a guest's face, I've yet not to see that, right? But when they first realize what it is, it just makes them smile, makes them happy. So, I mean, you know, we hope that our human uh, staff members do the, have the same reaction to our guests than the robot does. So that's really, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like personalizing the experience for yes. your guests, yeah. right? Even if it's just for yes. Valentine's Day, you've, you've done that, or you could specially do it for a certain customer when mm -hmm. you know they're coming in yeah. because they're uh, celebrating their anniversary, yeah, right? Exactly. You, could, you could modify that as well. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Um, at the moment, this T10 or Optimus Dines, Optimus, Dine, yes. uh, Optimus Dines' role is focused on specifically the restaurant. Um, would you see, uh, or, or do you see it, its role expanding to maybe other operations within the hotel, maybe like the banquet or uh, when you have a larger event? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the sky's the limit. It would be great even for the restaurant, for the robot to be more interactive, I guess, where it could even take orders, mm -hmm. where it could um, describe the food when it delivers the food that it knows what it is, right? It could tell the guest, we now have your falafel bowl with our um, tzatziki aioli, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Uh, please enjoy. Um, and then also to have it more, be more flexible, I guess, as well. Right now, it's really programmed to go to the table. We have to tell it that's the table and that's where it stops. But it would be nice, almost like a self-driving car, that it would recognize um, there's the guest at that table. So um, as well, we have an operation for breakfast where guests uh, casually order at a counter and then we ask them to remove the plates. But it would be great if it could roam mm -hmm. and recognize there's a table with a guest. It could stop there and say, please load me up with your plates or, or something around those lines. And then also, yes, definitely in the banquet area, where it could go for receptions, maybe deliver the beverages or water bottles, or even go around with appetizers, where it would slowly cruise and recognize when somebody's coming in to grab something that it would slow down. Um, I think there, there's a lot of usage for it, yeah. 
Yeah, no, this is this is great. While we're on, the, on this topic, um, if you have to think of like your dream robot for you know for for restaurants or even for the hotel, what would some other features be um, where you feel like this, this this is what your dream robot would be like? Yeah, personally, very fascinated by those um, espresso arms that do the espresso. I think those are very kind of repetitive tasks that could help and assist. That actually the uh, the, the flyby or the uh, coffee attendant could really focus on upselling, on you know preparing the food and beverage instead of, of focused on, on making the coffee. Um, the same for housekeeping, right? They're really hard, um, uh, yeah, hard labor that they have to do to get an assistance with making the bed. I think that's the biggest, most repetitive task that the room attendants have to do. Um, I think I think the more automation there is, I think the more people will crave as well a little bit that human interaction. So it'll be very exciting to see. It would be nice that some of that hard, uh, hard labor, I guess, can be assisted with, like I mentioned with housekeeping. Also in the kitchen, there's a lot of hard labor, you know, the stewards, the washing, the, you know, those kind of aspects would yeah. be great if we have more assistance there, um, uh, definitely. And Dennis, are there other things you want to add about, like any other thoughts on um, where this industry is going in general? I mean, uh, it's no secret that, uh, especially in the restaurant world, costs have been rising, so it has become an issue and uh, automation is just part of the future. But like Simone says, uh, do you want to automate everything or do you still keep the human element in it? And the way I look at it is uh, just do the right amount of automation so that the human then actually can focus more on the guest experience. Yeah. That's what I think uh, would be the key uh, to, to make this a successful uh, endeavor. Yeah, I think that that's right. Like for like the, how you strive here to provide an elevated experience. Yeah. I think the most successful, the, the hotels and restaurants, but also the uh, robot manufacturers, mm -hmm. uh, the most successful ones are gonna be the ones who focus on elevating the experience and using yeah. the robot as a tool to assist, but right. not yeah. not AI first or robot yeah. first, yeah. but it's like human first yeah. is probably going to be the right way to do yeah. it. Yeah, I think if we look at it that way, then it will be successful. And uh, I love nothing more than having the server at a table with the guest and uh, focusing on the guest experience, and then the robot can do everything else. Has your staff noticed that they've um, been able to spend more time with customers or yes. has that experience for them changed as a part of the job they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis to get to the Yes, absolutely. So if a server is at the table and now there is an empty plate, so uh, instead of just removing the plate and removing yourself from the table, you remove the plate, you put it on the robot, the robot takes it back and the, and the server still focuses on the guest experience. So that's a good example for that. Yeah. They're still talking, yeah. I really appreciate you both taking the time. I know you've, you've got busy uh, schedules. Um, but again, thank you for inviting us here uh, to your beautiful property and spending time with us. Um, you know, I love the food here. So next thing I'm going to do is just grab a meal before we head out. But thank you. Served by the robot. Right. Served by the robot. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you.